Until yesterday, I didn't know that uh, soul devourers are actually other versions of corrupted creatures. They have pretty much the same drop table and they can also drop the Kopesh at the same drop rate. I have actually been skipping these creatures because I just didn't know what they were. But now I do and it is going to be an addition to kills for my Kopesh. My current KC in the beginning of this video is on corrupted creatures 11,200. And for soul devourers, let's go down here to zero. So uh, we're going to start a video with these cases and uh, let's see where we end. I am now using melee because uh, I want to get that 99 attack. With aggression potion, I think this is a good spot. Like between these scarabs and these uh, salavas or whatever they're called. Maybe uh, around here somewhere should be fine. Then I pull uh, both of them. But uh, yeah, also remember to like the video if you like it. I appreciate it. Now, I put five Corrupted Scorpions in my player-owned dungeon, but uh, it doesn't seem like something I want to do, actually. I wanted to try it out to see if the loot would be sent to the chest, but it actually isn't. It's just dropped on the dungeon floor, so uh, that is going to be kind of annoying to deal with. I don't want to have to loot everything manually. Also, I just want to have a nice chest open at the end of it, so uh, you know what? I'm not going to do this. Look at that. Uh, the uh, attack pet. While killing some corrupted scorpions. I'm not even 99 yet, but uh, I'm not sure how that looks actually. I'll have a look at it in a bit. Saifu or Sifu? I'm not sure how you say that, but um, let's have a look at this pet. It's like a uh, dragon with a blindfold that does karate or something. Or maybe it's like a kung fu master. Of course, this uh, MC stands over it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Of course, you can check the experience I have on it. I think this is a pretty good one. So there was a new update with the beach event that just got released. I tried it out by the way and it doesn't really seem that efficient to do for an Iron Man. It, the XP rates are very slow. But um, if you want to disable the setting I'm about to talk about, which is uh, kind of annoying when you're cleaving down a lot of enemies, you have to go here and to item stack information. This is what I'm talking about. Look at this. The whole list covers like my entire screen when I'm cleaving down these enemies. You have to go to gameplay, then item drops, then item stack information, and untick show items in stack. Because, as I said, if you're cleaving down a lot of enemies, like I'm doing now, the stack of everything that drops is going to just cover your entire screen. So you can see there, it's huge. If you get even more drops than this, it's going to go even higher. So it, it gets pretty ridiculous sometimes. Actually doing some wood cutting and I actually gained like 400,000 wood cutting experience. This is uh, reset just kind of recently because I was trying out a different thing. I actually tried like three, four different methods, but uh, all of them are very slow. Turns out wood cutting is just a very slow skill. So I actually am taking a break from it and I'm doing a liberation of mass cab raid for Beastmaster Dursag. Let's try to uh, hopefully get a codex this time, it would be perfect, otherwise techie is always nice. Let's actually see that codex drop now, come on. Oh my god. Okay, well 1.6 million and quite a lot of techie, so I'll take it. I'm going to be doing some stuff in between, but uh, when I'm doing woodcutting, I am basically just AFKing Ivy and Priftiness. I was actually trying to do some Acadia trees with the Crystallize, but I ran out of soul runes really fast. Otherwise, that method is super good experience, it's like 200,000 experience an hour. But because it costs 6 soul runes every single cast of the crystallized spell and it only lasts for 30 seconds. For an Iron Man that can't craft soul runes, that is a not really reliable method. So I'm just going to be AFKing Ivy, it's good enough. Almost stopped on the perfect woodcutting experience, 420, 423. But uh, I've also been making some potions and restocking on like doing some farm runs and I have now some more overloads. I have, I'm making prayer potions now which is actually surprisingly a problem right now. I had so many before but uh, yeah when you PVM a lot this is what happens. I do at least want to try the Magister now that I have 110 Slayer. So I'm going to be making some wild pies and trying the boss out with some of those nice keys to the crossing that I've been farming from Corrupted Creatures. Of course I don't have the Kopesh yet, but uh, I do want to try the boss and just see how it goes. Also it is a pretty good way to get Feathers of Moth, which is always a struggle to keep up with if you're doing a lot of Slayer tasks on Corrupted Creatures. I just watched like a two minute guide on this. Uh, I kind of understand the mechanics, but uh, of course doing it yourself is the best way of learning. So I might waste the first key, but um, I only brought one. So I have as much food as possible 
And I'm probably going to use like a Supreme Sharpshooter instead of Reckless so I don't take too much damage or maybe the Majorat one. Wait, there's no way. Uh, I actually thought that... Wait, why are people even recommending that I should be using a Wild Pie if I can't even do damage to the boss after I it degrades by one skill? That, that is so useless. I guess I'm just TPing out then. Uh, why is why is everyone recommending me to use a wild pie when it's literally useless? Well, this obviously means I have to rethink some things because I have to get 115 Slayer then to be able to get the Kopesh and that is a Slayer grind of 25 million Slayer experience. Yes, I have to go from 40 million to 65 million. I'm pretty close to 116 here, so I have 69 million. But it is like 65 million for 115, so I, that is a very big grind. I grinded Slayer for like a week and I got 10 million, so that is two weeks of doing Slayer. So I'm just maybe now and then going to do some Slayer, but uh, I will probably go mostly for the uh, Drygors at this point. Imagine one small wild pie boy actually ruined my entire plan. Well, that's how it goes sometimes, and you know what that means? That actually means that I might as well use the materials that I've got from so many corrupted creature kills. We're going to have a look at this. So, I have 12,230 corrupted creatures and 11,000.2, 11.2k of that is all in this chest on task. As well as, let's see how many soul devourers I did. I did 802. So nearly 1,000 of those and 11.2k of loot is in this chest. And I really want to use the supplies probably because there's a lot of corrupted logs in here. And I want to use that for 99 fire making. I think it's going to be worth it. So let's see what we get from the chest. 99.991 mil.666. That is a cursed number, I have to say. A Vecna Skull. I got 362 Vital Sparks. That is a lot, because you only need uh, 1k of them to make the Limitless spell, which is really good. But um, almost 10 million in cash, 8,000 Corrupted Logs, so that won't be enough for 99 fire making, but it's going to be very nice. Oh my god, so many super attacks for Overloads. This Look at this, 181 Battle Thaves. That has to be a rare drop, right? So... Yeah, that's really good actually. 100 mil in loot, and I wonder how much of it is Alkibos. Oh my god. I am going to be rich, actually. Oh my god. <laughs> I think the best way of doing it is uh, I'm just going to craft a bunch of nature runes and fire runes through the abyss. And no, I do not have the wilderness sword. I just haven't got to actually doing the diary. I am a bit lazy sometimes with those things. I. Diaries just isn't my thing in this game, but I'm going to be crafting a bunch of nature runes, fire runes, and then I'll just put all these things along with some divine charges into the alchemizer. Doing that seems like a lot less painful than having to manually add like 2.3 thousand medium plated adamant salvage, and I'll just casually get some money over time. I fix all the runes and the charges, so I will be passively getting some money. But I have actually got my hands on another death touch darts. And I'm going to use it on the Ambassador again. And actually it was only like one week between the two Death Touch darts. When I used it on the Ambassador first time, I got like the worst drop ever. So let's see what we get this time. But uh, first I have to clear up to the boss. For some reason, after me watching that clip of some guy throwing a Death Touch dart at the Ambassador, I'm always so nervous that it's going to happen to me. Obviously it became like a huge clip, so... Uh, it has to be pretty rare that it happens, but uh, I'm still going to be a bit uh, cautious here. I'm going to go in, I'm going to attack the boss a few times, so I don't just get scammed on my darts. But let's wield it, and let's throw it. I have to do the auto hit, and there we go. No way! Oh my god, no way! That is a- no way! Oh my god, guys, do you know what that is? That is the pet! Holy shit, I didn't- oh my god. I did not ex- that's a zero KC pet! Okay, I'm sorry guys if that was super loud. Holy shit! What?! That is the most insane thing that has ever happened on this account. I am 100% serious. Okay, I need to uh... Oh my god. Jesus! What?! Zero KC Ambi! Look at this! Okay, I have to spawn the pet and I'm going to show you guys this is insane. Boss pets? Look at this pet. 
I actually can't believe I have this. Zero KC Ambi. I almost don't want to kill the boss now, but obviously I have to. But zero KC Ambi is just insane. Oh my god, that is... wow. The drop rate of this pet is 1 in 300 on a solo. Getting 300 kills in ED3 is insanely hard for an Iron Man. First off, just killing Ambi in itself is a very hard task to learn. And you definitely need tier 90s if you're not super good at the game. I, I mean, you have to be super good at the game to even kill it in the first place. But a limb drop is 1 in 55 in solos, I think. So this pet is almost 6 times as rare as getting one of the Eldritch crossbow pieces. And uh, wow. Th so this is like, essentially getting 2 Eldritch crossbows is basically how rare this is, the pet. The full 2 full crossbows. And I have it on 0 KC in 2 darts. Uh, I don't want to ramble too much about this. I'm going to go forward in the video. But I just felt like this uh, actually caught me so off guard. And is such an insane achievement. And obviously just insane luck. That I just felt like I had to uh, explain how lucky this was. So earlier in my video before the crazy ambipets. I did get those 8000 corrupted magic logs. And initially when I was looking at it. I was like okay this is way less than I thought. This, there's no way this is enough for 99. But it's only 500 corrupted logs of 99 after making some quick calculations. And so I do want to use all of them and get as close to 99 fire making as possible. Of course it's going to take some time. So I'm just going to end the video here. And in the beginning of the next video I am going to be pretty close to 99 fire making. And uh, almost done with another 99 towards that max grind. And I have a lot of skills that are close to 99. So we will be able to uh, get some fast 99s in the near future. For example, 230,000 off 99 herb lore. And 97 attack as well with that insane experience rate. I should just configure this. Uh, of like 500,000 experience uh, in just one ED3 run for example. So 99 attack is also very easy. So yeah, I will be uh, getting a lot of 99s in the near future hopefully. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. It is uh, probably one of the most insane videos I have done since my Barrows die back in episode like 12 or something when I got to the Barrows dies before uh, you could do clue scrolls as fast as you can now and they weren't stackable and all these things. So yeah, getting a zero KC Ambipet is definitely up there with that. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to see my future content and all that good stuff. You know what to do. Uh, have a good one, guys. Take care.